Chapter 5 of Runner When I reached my locker, I shoved my books inside, slammed the door shut, and then started down the hallway toward the main doors. I hadn't taken more than three steps when I heard Melissa's voice. Chance, wait up a second, okay? Her locker was across the hall and down from mine. I turned back and watched as she pulled a red jacket out of her locker and tied it around her waist. She closed her locker and walked quickly to where I stood. My hands are shaking so much I couldn't get my locker open, she said. She fell into stride with me as I headed for the exit, and she started talking to me as if we walked together out of the building every day. Arnold makes me so mad, she said. He's always lecturing us about the wonders of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, but he only believes in free speech in a book. Practice free speech in real life. Get somebody mad at you because of what you say, and all of a sudden he's got his hand over your mouth trying to muzzle you. We'd reached the main door. I opened it, let Melissa go first, and then stepped outside. Once I felt the fresh air in my face, I realized I'd been burning alive in that building. I'll see you around, Melissa, I said, and started down the stairs. She reached out and took hold of my forearm. Wait, Chance, she said. Come with me to Java John's. I really feel like talking to somebody. I don't know, Melissa. I've got to. Please, Chance, just for a few minutes. I didn't know what to say. It had been... It had been a long time since anyone had asked me to do anything. I shrugged. Okay, but just for a couple of minutes. John Java Johns is opposite the west side of campus. When we turned the corner by the A building, we saw Melody and Heather and a couple of their friends. They had formed a semicircle around Brent Miller, as if he were some sort of rock star and they were adoring, his adoring groupies. Melissa and I instinctively started walking faster, hoping to get by unseen. We almost made it too, but Heather's voice reached out and caught us. She taunted. I would have kept going, but Melissa turned back. Shut up, Heather. Shut up yourself, Heather snapped back. Miller stepped toward me. You had a lot to say in that classroom, Chance. How come you're so quiet now? He took another step toward me and then another. His hands curled into fists. When he was a yard away, he stopped. Here I am. Take your best shot. I had no chance. Miller was bigger, older, stronger, and he'd had training. Melody and Heather, Heather and Melody and the other girls were looking at me, their eyes gleaming with excitement. They wanted to see a fight. They wanted to see me get my face pounded in. Melissa grabbed, grabbed my arm and pulled on it. Let it go, Chance, she said. Let's just get out of here. I wanted to hit Miller. For a moment, I wanted to hit him more than I wanted anything in the world. But I was afraid of him, too, so I let Melissa pull me away. You're a coward, he called after me. Always were and always will be, just like your old man.